What's up, wide world? Chef Eduardo Garcia, Southwest Montana. The leaves have mostly fallen. It is, it was 60. I feel like it's now 40. It is for sure fall, coming close to winter. And I'm psyched to be here with everybody. We're gonna cook some food. We're gonna cook from the heart. We're going to spice things up with Montana Mex seasonings. We're gonna be cooking them on these Traeger bad boys. Both are preheated. And I think this is my third time around with the Traeger Nation. And I love that. So I'm psyched to be back. And anyone who's joining and was already here for other TKLs, welcome back. For anyone who's new to me, to this, to what we're doing, this is the rough format. We're gonna do 60 minute cooking demo. We're going to grill steelhead. We're going to grill sweet potatoes. And we're gonna grill broccolini. First things first, who the heck am I? I'm a chef by trade. Um, I worked in the yachting industry for about 10 years, flipping burgers and pizzas in high school, then yachting, traveled for 10 years around the world as a yacht chef. And then I came home to Montana in 2011 to start a food brand, Montana Mex. Our company makes organic, all natural, preservative free condiments and seasonings for all of your cooking and kitchen play. And I'm really, really grateful to have this opportunity to work with Traeger Grills on kind of what I call my call to action, my language with the world, which is cooking. So I've been flipping burgers and throwing pizzas since 15. So coming up on 25 years. So it's a real treat to be here with everybody. In addition to that, it's the holiday seasons. You know, I know my wife and I were talking about Thanksgiving. Are we traveling? Are we not traveling? And we've made the call, we're gonna stay home. We're gonna stay home. And so many of us may be considering that same thing right now. Um, and not going out and being with your family or loved ones. And, and so this meal, I just want to throw it out there from the beginning that uh, I know for certain I am going to miss that connectivity and that sense of community. And yet, I guess the way I see it is this is a short-term give. It's a short-term put the effort in for hopefully a long-term future. So we're going to turn up the heat at home, we're going to get festive at home, and we're gonna celebrate the best way we know how in the Garcia home, which is cooking. So this is my opportunity to tee up a meal that I hope everybody brings into their holiday celebrations this fall. Of course, the recipe for the dishes we're gonna make will be on the Traeger website, along with hundreds of other recipes. So after this TKL, I hope you head there at some point, find those recipes, and, um, and give them a spin, see how they work for you. And of course, we will follow the recipe. We may ad lib a little here and there, and I encourage you to do the same. Food should be fun. It should be an event filled with play. So first things first, we're going to grill sweet potatoes. I've got my sweet potatoes here. I'm going to use three of them. Let's see. And depending on, you know, you could be going with a sweet potato like this, bad mama jamma, and then you can have one like this. So, you know, with food, it's organic, it's fluid, and you're gonna ad lib a little bit and, and just find what works best for you. These three look tremendous, they look absolutely fine. So, what I'm gonna start with is I'm just gonna cut these knobby ends off, just like that. And I'm using organic sweet potatoes, so I have no problem keeping the peel on them. If you're not using organic, you're using conventional, just considering giving them a really good scrub and a really good wash. So listen, I lost my hand in an electrical injury in 2011, and I was pretty particular about how I cut my foods, my knife skills prior to that event for anyone that worked with me on the boats or kitchens of my past career. And when my injury came about, gosh, it, and, and for anyone wondering, well, what injury are you talking about? I'm an amputee, I've got this hook for a left hand, and I was electrocuted in 2011. Um, there's a documentary called Charge, feel free to, after, don't go anywhere right now, after this TKL and after the Q&A with Chad Ward afterwards, then go Google Charge and check it out and give it a look and it'll sort of speak to this story. But my point would be that when I became an amputee, I was forced to 
kind of rethink how I do things in the kitchen. And, and you know what? I, I think the silver lining, uh, along with many silver linings that I've come to find out from this injury, is that it's all right to um, not have everything just need to be perfect every single time. And so I know everyone at home is like, yeah, knife skills. You put a ruler on your cutting board in cooking school? I did, I'm telling you, there'd be a ruler right here. And I'd be getting this potato right there and say, okay, three inches, they're all gonna be three inches. We're just gonna go like this. We're gonna take this potato, and first things first is I'm gonna cut, and I do this with almost all round objects that I cook. So these are sweet potatoes, but if I was using carrots or parsnips or rutabaga, beets, and if I was going to try to make steak fries or small rectangles, I'm gonna cut one end flat. So I'm gonna take about a half, three quarter inch cut. Then I'm gonna turn it. Now my sweet potato is solid. Not gonna rock around on me. So I'm gonna to continue to cut about half to three quarter inch thick slices. I'm gonna work through all three first. So there we go. Oh, and actually I'm gonna pause for a second because there's a critical note. I'm gonna make sure that my grills are on. As you see, I'm working with a ranger over here and I'm gonna make sure that my ranger is set at 380, yep and it's at 370 right now, so it's just holding temp and doing a really good job considering how cold it is. And then my Ironwood 885 is set at 450, and those are both preheating. So highly recommend get your grills preheated before you start your prep work. Get my last sweet potato cut up. Go. Now, I absolutely adore a good sweet potato fry, and so that's basically what we're going for here. So we're just going to go with some really large format pieces. Got a sheet pan that they're going to live on. The wind's whipping, so I'm going to put that spoon there to keep my parchment paper from blowing off. And parchment paper is I, I think it's well worth the investment and small resource of paper. I think it's uh, going to help your cleaning out. Not going to include this aspen leaf. Um, we'll leave that right there. So we're just going to cut our sweet potato like this. Totally okay to double up if we end up getting ambitious with our chopping skills. So the sweet potatoes in and of themselves are going to take anywhere from, we're going to just call it 30 minutes to 40 minutes, and this is going to depend on so many different factors, how crowded they are on the pan, um, the outside temperature that you're grilling in, and again with, and, and even the freshness of your sweet potato, you know, what the moisture content is, and, and that's, I mean, those are nuanced timing notes there, but you know, the thing about cooking is we, we just want to keep it fluid and we want to let the food be our guide. And right off the bat, I'm going to cut these ones in half because they're a little big. We're still going with the same overall thickness though. That one's thin. I'm going to use that one for the chickens. Oh, so my team member Isabel has got questions coming from you all. And I love that. It kind of makes me feel like I'm in my home kitchen with everyone cooking. So note to everyone listening, if you have questions, keep them coming. And the question was, what's my favorite fish? Oh boy, I guess my favorite fish to cook most likely is gonna be whatever fish I just caught. If I don't happen to be catching and I'm uh, buying the fish myself, I really like fish that have um, stronger flavors, higher fat content, or what we would call a sort of oilier fishes. Um, love the salmon family, love the trout family, um, mackerel, anchovy sardine, all beautiful. And then the flatfish, flounder, fluke, sole, halibut, give me all of that. Okay, so potatoes chopped on a sheet tray, mostly evenly distributed. We're going to take some Montana Max extra virgin avocado oil. What kind of knife are you just using? 
This is a 10 inch shun. Chef's knife is the shape. So now with our sweet potatoes, we've got some avocado oil on them. I'm gonna dress them up with some fresh rosemary, some sea salt, and then I'm gonna use two of my beloved Montana Mex seasoning blends. We'll use the red chili blend, beautiful mix of Guajillo, Ancho, Pasilla, and New Mexico Chile. All four different chiles lend sort of a different flavor, color, or sugar, or sweetness to the blend. So it's, uh, I think, yeah, I think it's just sort of a, um, an interesting mild red chili blend is the best way to put it. So great on your potatoes, your eggs, popcorn. Um, and I'm gonna go with just a little pile of rosemary and I'm gonna roughly chop my rosemary. I am A-OK -okay with really big pieces. Where can you purchase your seasoning? Seasoning blend, uh, the Montana Mex seasoning blend can be found at montanamex.com and, and stick around, poke around, you know. Um, check out our other recipes and check out um, all the little drop down menus, just a little insight into who we are as a company. It would be, that would thrill me, you know? It's um, an interesting thing when you have a food brand, it very much, and, and for me, you know, this was started as a family and friend project to bring um, not just tasty food, eh? That's, you gotta, you're not even allowed in the room, you know? It has to be that as a prerequisite, but then um, healthy foods and foods with story. So we, you know, our goal is, and really, I think that's one of my loves of working with Traeger is encouraging individuals to play with their food like we're doing right now and kind of step out of, if you're kind of hovering between, oh, I want to get into cooking and hmm, get into cooking it is fun. It's an extension of your heartbeat, sharing love for others. I swear there's a dopamine release that happens every time I cook and it just makes me feel fired up. One note. If you get a seasoning blend and there's a little clumps on it, these are preservative free. We don't use any caking blends in them. There is some organic ground rice hull that helps it cake. Um, but should it, you get some clumps, just give it a shake. It'll break right up. So now I'm just gonna give these potatoes a little bit of a stir. Make sure they're all seasoned evenly. Right. Those look just fine. Yep, even layer. Next step, sweet potato going on our Ironwood 885, currently set at 450 degrees. Ready to go. We're going to take our sheet tray. going to do its thing. Um, I have hickory pellets in both grills right now. Uh, personally, I'm a really big fan of hickory. I like the flavor. I think it's just on that. It's not sort of your cherry or apple loaded with a bunch of sugars and fruit notes. Um, tends to be a little heavier, but not as heavy as sort of a pecan, if you will, or a mesquite. Um, and with my foods, I absolutely adore the flavor of smoke in my food. So I don't mind going with a slightly he heavier pellet. Okay, so our sweet potato fries, as we'll call them, are on the grill doing their thing. Next up, we're going to work on a steelhead filet. Here we are. I'm going to remove that little ant. He has no business with my steelhead. Thank you very much. Look at this beautiful filet. Lovely. So. As we'll notice, it's a whole filet. This is about a 1.3, 1.4 pound filet. Um, and before we talk about the specifics, there may be questions or some of you wondering, what is steelhead? Steelhead is a rainbow trout. So it's in the salmonoid family, but it is not a salmon. It is a trout. Uh, it's a rainbow trout, but it is, a, it, it is a rainbow trout. And get this, it's just magical what this fish has managed to do over time. But it is a steelhead is a rainbow trout that when it is a juvenile, it leaves fresh water 
where it is, was hatched or where its mama laid those eggs, and then it makes its way as a juvenile into the ocean. Okay. It migrates to the ocean, then it spends its life doing fishy things in the ocean for anywhere between one to three years. At that point, the fish will then migrate back to the river of its origin, go from a salt environment to a freshwater environment to spawn and go back into the earth. Well, this one is a farm steelhead. And um, you know, for all of you fly fisher or fishermen and fisherwomen out there, um, this is so high on my bucket list is to go fly fishing for steelhead. Um, but until that happens, until my freezer is full of fish I've caught, um, you can get this most often from August to September, maybe at the latest, um, from your local fishmongers. It's sort of like the general season for North American steelhead. So um, that's the fish at large. And what I like to look for when I'm going to cook for steelhead, I really like leaving the skin on. I find that the scales do not need to be removed in order to make the fish palatable, whereas a salmon, the scales are so much larger that you do want to scale those first. Um, then I'm going to check the face. So I'm going to check the um, flesh side of the fillet, and I'm going to just make sure there's no um, pin bones. These were all removed. Thank you to my local fishmonger. So nice. If you don't have pliers at home, ask your fishmonger to make sure the pin bones are removed. Um, and beyond that, this looks ready to play. So first up, I'm going to take a nub of ginger. I'm going to go with this right here. Ah, so good. So good. And I'm going to grate ginger liberally and literally all over the steelhead. That is snow behind me. We, uh, we had 12 inches land in Montana in the last week. Yeah. This is a microplane uh, grater, or uh, I guess it could be used as a zester. These are such handy tools. I highly recommend pick one up. Um, should be an indispensable part of your kitchen kit. You can grate nutmeg, cinnamon stick, so you can grate hard seeds, and you can grate soft things like garlic cloves and ginger. The recipe for this steelhead is on the Traeger website with many others. So for the specific measurements, if you want to start there, uh, just give that recipe a look. But I will encourage you here and now, let it be known that um, I would be honored for you to start with this recipe and then take off, make it your own, add a few things here or there that call to you and, uh, and kind of make it your signature. And then get a hold of me at Chef Eduardo Garcia on Instagram or hit us up on Montana Max, tag Traeger as well, and uh, let me know how you're cooking with it. Um, you know, on the one hand, I've been cooking since I was 15. I absolutely love it. I hope that's obvious and visible. Um, but I, I, I so enjoy it when you all cook out there and then you share what you're up to with me. Kind of makes the buy-in real. This is not a one-way one -way thing, but it's sort of a feed loop back. And I get to hear you, and I can holler back and say, hey, good job. Thanks for sending me that photo. Love what you did with it. <gasps> Cracked coriander, dill, parsley. Good job. That looks great. So again, you know, start with these recipes, and then um, Go play. So next up, we have our grated ginger on our filet. I'm going to use the Montana Mex jalapeno blend. Um, for any of you spice lovers out there, and, and for those that like medium to mild heat, you could start with a little and then bump up. But what this is, is the blend of powdered jalapeno, dry garlic, oregano, cilantro, sea salt. And I know that the crew here likes a little spice. So I'm going to put just a nice pinch so it's evenly covering the whole filet. Then I'm going to use that red chili blend again. I'm just going to go with a little dusting, just like that. And all I'm looking for here is to just to make sure there's sort of even coverage. And then our sweet seasoning blend is the last one I'm putting on. The sweet seasoning blend is really quite beautiful. It's organic cane sugar, orange peel, cinnamon, 
ginger, allspice, clove, all flavorings and seasonings that, or flavors and se flavors that make the seasoning blend that pair beautifully with, uh, with fish. So next up, I'm gonna take a lemon. Again, I really like using organic lemons. Make, I feel really confident keeping the rind whole and on here. And I'm gonna put a little lemon, well, I shouldn't say little. I'm gonna cover this filet in thinly sliced lemon and let it cook into the filet by resting on top. Have you had a chance to go hunting yet? <sighs> Don't tease me with a hunting question, folks. Yes, I went archery hunting for four days and uh, had a few close calls and a couple good reminders on um, small mistakes made. And I think I'm going to go out this Sunday with my twin brother Eugenio with his future father-in-law who hasn't been hunting in years. So for me as an avid hunter and outdoorsman, I really, really love being outside by myself and, and sort of on my agenda. But um, to go out with others and help, encourage, share is also uh, a great day out for me. So yes, I will go walk in the woods this Sunday, I believe. Okay, here we go. You can see I'm putting these thin slices. They don't have to be so thin, but as thin as you'd like them on top of the steelhead. So now I want to call this out before I put the steelhead on the ranger. <clears throat> Depending on the thickness of the filet and the weight, the time to cook is going to vary. And so again, that's sort of that battle cry of mine, which is let the recipes guide you, but the exploration is wholeheartedly yours to own. So. This is a 1.3 pound filet. I believe the recipe calls for a two and a half to three pound filet, which is gonna take that full 25 to 30 minutes of cooking time to cook all the way through. I like to also keep my fish, especially fatty cuts um, in the trout or in the salmon family and sea run trout family. I like to cook them just past medium, but really I, I kind of like them a little underdone. And so depending on the thickness of your filet, you're just gonna wanna watch it as it cooks and um, if, you, if you want your fish cooked all the way through then, then you'll wait until it's nice and firm on top. If you, like me, appreciate it just a little bit less done, um, then just monitor it because a thinner filet is going to cook quicker. The last step in prepping the filet is I'm going to put our Montana Max extra virgin avocado oil the buttery notes of the avocado. It's quite a fatty uh, fruit, and so the oil is a very rich, rich, nutrient-rich oil, packed full of vitamins. Um, and I am going to just give this whole filet a final dressing, just like that. Okay. So that's our steelhead done. I'm going to check on these sweet potato fries. Come with me. Let's look. Ooh. Hey, friends. Great question. Is steelhead, does steelhead have a strong fishy flavor? I actually think it's the other way around. I think that, um, and, and I don't know if because steelhead has a freshwater cycle in its life or not, but I think it has more to do with, it's a leaner protein fish than salmon, and so it is going to have a slightly milder flavor than other, um, like a king salmon is gonna have a stronger ocean fish flavor to it. Um, so really, if, if you're, your family or yourself is more on the mild um, penchant for flavor profiles when it comes to fish, start with steelhead. Could be a perfect one for your crowd. So, let's check our grill.
that ranger looks ready to go. So we're going to bring the whole cutting board over. I'm just going to slide the entire fillet on top of the grill. I'm going to leave the lid open. And it may be a bit of a faux pas in the grilling world, but I really like to let that skin crisp up. And I like to let the heat come directly into the skin and start rendering all the beautiful fat that lives in the layer between the skin and the flesh itself or the muscle. And so having that, um, that heat coming into the skin first, the way that my mind has me convinced is that the flavors from within the skin, think about you know, any, any produce item, a vegetable, skin on chicken, if you will, or cracklings on pork, there's so much flavor in the skin. And I wanna keep, um, I wanna keep the flavor in the fish itself. So I'm gonna put, it skin, I'm gonna put the flay skin side down and let that heat hit the skin first. That's where that cooking is gonna start activating. That's where the heat is really gonna start sort of drawing and activating all the flavors in the skin itself. And I think they're, my belief is that they go up into the muscle. Let's put it on the grill. We're gonna be maxing out our real estate, but that's all right. There we are. So now again, I'm gonna leave that steelhead fillet on the grill, lid open, let it do its thing. Because it's so cold out, we're just gonna watch it. And at about 15 minutes in, if I think that we need to encourage the cooking time and encourage its process, I'll just lit it. And that'll be a tent that's gonna draw some of that heat right on top and it's gonna help it achieve the doneness I'm looking for. So next up on our menu, on our agenda, this is organic broccolini. It is not broccoli rabe. Now the recipe that I'm punting off of is on the Traeger website. And the, website, the, the recipe itself is a grilled broccoli rabe recipe. Now, I'm certain that times a year here in Montana, my local grocer is gonna carry broccoli rabe, but alas, not today, or at least not yesterday when I was shopping. So for anyone else at home, if you can't find broccoli rabe, Feel free, sub with broccolini. It is also in the cruciferous family. So it's Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, broccoli rabe. For those, and I know, and I want to speak to broccoli rabe for a second, even though that's not what we're using today, because I highly encourage everybody, find the recipe on the Traeger site. I'll throw to it in my stories on Instagram after this. But broccoli rabe is from a flavor point of view, it's very different from broccoli in that it really has a bite or a bit of a spice and pungency to it. So think of mustard leaves, think of arugula in a sense. So if you took arugula and crossed it with broccolini, I feel like that's what you get with broccoli, Rob. You're gonna get nice um, florets or crown tops, a very tasty stock, but then you're, the, the broccoli, Rob, is gonna have more leaves and the leaves are really gonna have sort of that nice spicy bite. So if you can find it, go for it. Next up, I'm just gonna cut the very bottom inch or so off of all of these stems. Some of them look pretty good. And the reason I do that is more often than not, the produce that we buy in the grocery store will have already been cut to, uh, off the, the main mother plant, but it probably would have also sat for sometime a week or so and that that end if you think about it like a wound really it will have dried out and I want a nice fresh cut end without sort of a dried butt to my broccolini so I'm just gonna cut the ends off so one of my favorite parts about this vegetable though and to be honest broccoli if I'm cooking with the head of broccoli I almost always cut it so it has a big beautiful stock attached to it just think it's also a very uh, yummy part of that vegetable. Cut, cleaned, ready to rock in a bowl. What temp did you initially set your steelhead at? The steelhead is cooking at 380. 
Thank you for that call out. I'm checking my pellets. Hopper's still full. And I, I probably will close that lid, but for now I'm just going to focus on cooking that, that skin. So, here's our broccolini. I'm going to dress it with a little extra virgin avocado oil. Now I want to be clear, you know, what you have in your pantry right now, go for it. So if you have uh, a nice extra virgin olive oil, use it. Um, if you have a walnut oil, use that. I have a soft spot for avocado oil. It's uh, incredibly heart healthy, also has a high smoke point. So what that means is we're cooking at 450, Broco the avocado oil has a very high smoke point, so the nutrients will not be burnt off up until around 450, 480. So I think that it's an opportunity to keep a little bit nutri more nutrition in our food. And let's see here. Salt, oil. I'm going to throw a little black pepper on here. This is my mortal and pestle. Actually, it's my wife's, but she brought it into our lives, so I use it. One would think, if you have a pepper mill, same thing. I still don't own a pepper mill as a professional chef. I know. I know there's friends out there who are listening and watching this saying, Eduardo, chef, you still don't have a pepper mill? Just one of those things. But you know what? This is fun. It keeps my mind activated. Love the sound of these peppercorns popping. And I feel like this is an ode to my ancestors, which is really what cooking is. You know, cooking is a nod to our cultural roots, our heritage. It's in a way to establish relevancy with kind of where we're from, really transcending food from being a caloric to-do, got to eat breakfast, got to eat lunch, got to eat dinner, to grinding peppercorns with you know, just, what a beautiful act, right? Like, Hey, that's just me. Maybe that's why I'm a chef, because I geek out on these things. Black peppercorns. Now, if you'd like this to be a touch spicy, you can add chili flakes. You can do as I do with the Montana Max jalapeno seasoning. I personally really like my broccoli and my vegetables have a little spice to them. There we go. Oh, I start to smell that salmon now. Or sorry, did I call it a salmon? What a faux pas, I apologize to the kingdom of fish that make up the steelhead. I can smell that steelhead going. And in the world of cooking, they say, when you smell it, better check it. So let's give it a look. Oh yeah. So, steelhead is doing exactly what it should be doing. It's getting a lot of really direct and hot heat coming right up into the skin. It's starting to crisp up, starting to notice that it's going from that bright, um, deep orange pink, orange pink rose color to a lighter rose sort of apricot color of cooked, you know, salmon steelhead. Um, but the center is still completely raw, which is great. So it's not cooking through completely. It's just getting a lot of that heat directly into the skin. So we'll check our sweet potatoes. Yeah, these, these have been on the grill for, I think right around 20 minutes now. Okay. 
So we're going to take we're going to take our broccolini, and I'm actually going to let it sit for just a second. I'm going to close the lid on that ironwood, let it come back up to temp, and then I'll throw the broccolini on. Hello. So now, if you end up with a little bit of a grease flare up like this, cut the air off to it. Turn the lid on it just like that. And what that means is though too, is that that steel head is now going to start cooking a lot quicker. So we're just gonna keep our eye on it and pull it a little early. Broccolini going on the grill. Use our tongs and get it spread out and even. I'm going to check this out. There's a lot of smoke coming out here. Oh, yeah. Can I just tell you? This wide spatula that comes with a cutting edge on it that Traeger makes is going to become my new favorite grill item, especially for moving large format, delicate pieces of grilled items like seafood. Well done, Traeger. This thing is terrific. Okay, wow. Turning the lid, shutting the lid on our seal head did the trick put that flare up out. You know, there's so much, there's a lot of fat content in that steel head and flare ups are just one of those things that's gonna happen. But keep your eye on your grill. If you do get a flare up like that, cut the oxygen off to it by closing the lid. It's gonna help suffocate that flare up. You know, the meal, I would say, depending on how hungry your crew is, six people would be a nice, comfortable, general, generous uh, sort of layout and serving. Definitely on that broccoli, Rob, those were big bunches. I probably could have thinned that back a little bit, but I do like my veg. So, um, and, and I would I'd also encourage you, gosh, it's just such a bizarre time in the world if you are home and, and you're not going to be with your crew, with your team, with your community, my battle cry to you is cook a meal for yourself anyway and have some fun with it. Celebrate just the fact that you get to cook on your own at home. So go for the whole steelhead filet, you know, especially with a 1.2, three pounder if you can find a small one. And, um, I know personally, I'd go through six or eight ounces at a single serving if I was eating by myself. I'd pair it with a beautiful Pinot Noir or Sauvignon Blanc. And then if there was any leftovers, that flaked salmon on top of a salad in an omelet, nothing wrong with leftovers. So I'm gonna check our fish out one more time. Yeah, that looks great. That looks great. So I'll be curious what everyone else is cooking out there for your holiday setups with your family this year. I think that, you know, my mom was vegan for many years and then she started to eat fish. Uh, she felt like she needed some animal-based animal proteins back in her diet. So I know for us, um, having a fish on the table for a holiday meal, not completely unheard of. So a nice way to maybe just spice up your protein offering from sort of your, your classic holiday, uh, holiday meats. I can smell that broccolini grilling. Yeah. 
that looks like it's doing great things. Um, I think while we're waiting for things to finish up, I whipped up a little fry sauce. So this is a Montana Mex organic ketchup, mayonnaise, lemon, a little jalapeno seasoning. Just thinking about this dish minutes before we went live, checked my fridge, and I grabbed equal parts mayonnaise and ketchup, mixed them, a little lemon, a little jalapeno seasoning, and I'm going to use that for our sweet potatoes. Just a nice little, nice little dunk. And again, basic, basic aioli, effectively, but using a mayonnaise as a base. You could add raw garlic. You could add chopped chives. You could add dill. Maybe a splash of vinegar instead of lemon. A little bit of sugar or honey. You can play with it. Oh, all right. That skin is doing what I love to see salmonoid family fish's skin do, which is get nice and crispy. I'm a big fan of eating that skin. Um, just texturally, I find it super interesting. And a little bit of a throwback to my love of the fish in that family. I was looking for this photo prior to the TKL today and digging through my printed 35 mil prints because I know there's a photo of me circa, I want to say it's 2001, so 21 years old, holding a huge king salmon in my chef outfit. And I was on my first yacht, the yacht Dorothea. And that yacht traveled, San Diego was a home base, but we traveled down to Costa Rica and up to British Columbia throughout the year. And Gosh, when we were in British Columbia, the owner of the yacht, the boss, would do a lot of fishing. And so at some point as the chef, not only are we cleaning the fish, but it's 101 different ways to make salmon. You know, we're just, the freezers were full of it. And on the one hand, you'd think I would have been sick of it or burnt out, but I just fell in love with it. I mean, you know how it is when you eat some food, when you eat good, healthy food that's heart healthy for you, especially like trout and salmon or fish in that family, um, it just, my body, I think, craves more of it and wants more of that. So I never burnt out on it. I've always loved that fish. But I was looking for the photo because I thought, how fun. Invite everyone to come hang out and cook with me in real time today live, but tee it up with a photo of say moi at 21. Oh. This is doing beautiful things. I like what I'm seeing here. I'm going to give all this broccolini a little flip. It's starting to char, which is what I want it to do. suggestions. Why, yes, I do. Hold that thought. Okay, so I want to call something out. Our steelhead is right where I'm minutes from pulling it off. So I'm going to shut the lid. I want to get some of that top-down heat on my steelhead and just to finish the top, okay? Lid on, don't let me forget. I'm gonna come back to that. Next up, get our platter ready. What if a score of a platter, right? I found this at a pottery shop nearby here in Montana and it was on offer because it was missing this handle and kind of like me, it's like not really missing a handle, it's just full of character, right? And so I've always loved this platter. So we're using it today. Beer and wine pairings. I would go, if I went for a wine, I'd go for a Pinot Noir. I would go for a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, either one of those, I think, would pair well with all the components of the dish. If I went with a beer, gosh, I'm not so great with beer pairings. I'm certain there's a pro team member out there on Traeger to staff that is. So if you're listening or watching this, hit me up, because now I'm curious. But personally, 
I would probably do like a citrusy IPA or a Pilsner. Let's check this out. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, looking lush. I'm gonna pull our broccolini and sweet potatoes off. Hello. This is exactly how I love eating broccoli, broccolini, broccoli rabe. I like it a little bit blistered, a little bit charred. Still nice and bright green, so there's gonna be a bite to it. Check these sweet potatoes. I gotta do this. I gotta do this because I have the tool. Making my life easy over here, Traeger. Thank you. I gotta give my hat off to the Traeger team for developing this recipe. I think it is an absolute winner. Great job, team. Great, great job. Let's go get the piece de resistance, the steel head. looks lush. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to make this dish for my mama. Coming up, we're doing Thanksgiving early this year. You know how it is, multiple families. At least our corn team has been my mom and our immediates. So very grateful to have the opportunity to still spend time with each other and definitely in the kitchen around a meal. And now you could roll with this platter family style. You could also take, take your veggies. You could build your dish out just like this and have it all on one platter. If you're cooking for yourself at home, take the time Design it how you like. Make it your creation. Would you ever flip the fish over to get grill flavor on the other side? See, I would, so that's a great question. Would I flip the fish over to get marks on the other side? I would, I would probably keep the lemon off of it just so that they don't fall off when I do the flip. With a spatula like this made a whole lot easier. In the past, I have definitely, in the past, I have definitely used sort of a flipping technique to get more caramelization, but that's gonna be, I would definitely do that on a thicker cut. I'm gonna do it on a, I'll do that on a thicker fillet. Yeah. I know many. Many, many an individual out there is going to love this recipe, so I highly encourage you to please make it. It is gorgeous. I think you're going to love it. Nice way to celebrate the opportunity to have food on our tables with gratitude. There we go, that. And 
You know, this happened minutes before we went live. I was reviewing this recipe on the website, on Traeger's website, and I saw that there was an aioli or a dip in the frame of the photo, and I thought to myself, well, I want to try that out. So I grabbed some mayonnaise from the fridge with our ketchup. Mm. Yeah, do that. What's your favorite Montana Mex product? Mm. I got to make myself a bite here too. Favorite Montana Mex product? <sighs> this time of year, when eating season happens. Anyone else call the holiday season eating season? Is it just, I know I'm not the only one. Probably going for healthy fats and healthy oils. Um, if not, that right there, my jalapeno seasoning. Um, I, ju I just love spice, love spice. Can't get enough of it. I wanna give this a taste. What other questions are out there? I hope everybody, oh, look at this. I'm cutting right into the shoulder. Beautiful. Why Montana? Why Montana? You know, my mom moved us, I'm gonna let everyone in on a secret, not, not so much of a secret, because this is gonna live forever on the interwebs, but um, my mother moved us from LA to Montana in 85, or maybe it was 86. Grateful she did. Grateful she did, yeah. I absolutely love being here. So, let's try this out. Yeah, you can't beat grilled veggies. That broccolini is on point. Should have gave a note. Little squeeze of lemon when that broccolini or broccoli rob comes off the grill. It's not gonna hurt, it's only gonna help it. The acids in the lemon are gonna help cut some of the varied fat content of the meal to clean your palate out so that you can sort of receive and kind of keep your palate fresh as it is. I'm gonna try this steelhead too. Mm-hmm, okay. Do not skimp on the ginger. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's all the things I want in sort of a fall dish. It's got that warm chest, warm, warm chest sensation, the ginger going down, a little bit of the bite of that jalapeno. Sweet potato steak fries with rosemary, a little red chili, lovely. Are the mm. Parts of the sweet potato are crispy, the smaller cuts, probably another 10 minutes and they would just continue to get golden brown on the outside. So it's really up to you. I was keeping pace with the steel head. And so again, it's being in the kitchen, it's fun, it's fluid, it's a little bit of a dance. And in a way it's like stepping into the wild. Cooking is not a walk in the park. It's not a walk through the zoo. Every time we're out here or in our kitchens cooking, we're working with organic materials that are gonna be different, and that's a great thing. It's sort of Mother Nature's way of saying, hey, stay on your toes, cooks, stay on your toes, chefs. You know, it's all gonna be slightly different depending on the day, and that's a good thing. Keeps it exciting. Keeps it exciting. Yeah, but that is very yummy. This dish blends beautifully together. Mm-hmm. I think with, with fish, fish that has higher fat content, I think it's gonna freeze a little longer, but for the most part, especially if it's gonna be well sealed, I've pulled fish out of the freezer past six months, um, but I think any time after that, what happens is, depending on how you've stored it and how well it's sealed with no air, is gonna to contribute to how long you can keep it held for in the freezer. So if you're vacuum sealing it, and then you're not moving that frozen filet around often and sometimes moving it around and knocking that filet frozen 
against other frozen items or the edges of your freezer can create little pinhole leaks that let air come in and that results in freezer burn. So I like a rule of thumb of maybe max six months for frozen seafoods, six to eight. Um, but what else can I say? It's a good time of year to be grateful. It's a good time to celebrate what we do have versus what we don't or what we can't control. So stick with it. It's been a wonky year, but you are in the driver's seat, especially when it comes to this throwdown here. You have the tools, you have the tips, you now have the know-how. Um, so cook this dish for yourself. Celebrate your opportunity, your ability to eat and cook for yourself and or share this with others as it's safe for you to do. And I would be remiss to not look forward and also mention uh, Matt Pittman with Meat Church is doing four weeks of Thanksgiving starting beginning November. So in a couple days, we're kicking that off. So tune in for those. And in 15 minutes, I'm going to meet up with Chad Ward, mi amigo, for a conversation, for a question and answer. And that's going to be on Instagram Live. So head over there 15 minutes from now and join us. Bring your questions. Bring an answer if you got one. I'll take it. So this is Chef Eduardo Garcia with Montana Mex, Traeger Grills, coming together for a Traeger Kitchen Live. From me to all of you, adios, folks. Much love. See you soon.